When we return to our planet, the High Court may well sentence you to torture. Well, 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 welcome back to our vlogcast, where we discuss yes. the things that matter to us. Movies, video games, books, when I learn to read. Yes. Any case, let's get on with the show. We're trying to keep this to an hour. An hour. Yes. It, it will be an hour. <laughs> it will occur. We, we, we did, we were told uh, the Rubble Gaming Club is doing auditions for mm -hmm. their channel so if you are interested in joining the rebel gaming club you need to check them out mm -hmm. they're a great group of people we did our audition hopefully yeah. we'll actually make the cut we're not necessarily leaving this channel but it would be really awesome if we could produce some of our cool stuff if you guys didn't catch the wise guys that stands bys you gotta check it out check it out it's on our channel eventually on inside movies galore as well yes so uh, we've got a lot of stuff going on this week. Uh, I mean, I started a couple of pro, a couple of new anime and okay. things. Mostly, actually, all anime. Ooh. Uh, there's a new series. I don't know whether you, I guess it's still Japanese animation, so it's still anime. It's a claymation series. So not claymation, sorry, stop motion series. Okay. Uh, called Rilla Kakuma and Karu. Okay. Which is a stop motion series on Netflix about this woman who lives in an apartment with two teddy bears, living teddy bears, and a and a baby chick. <laughs> okay. And it comes across like a child show, but it touches on some very adult themes like loneliness and being left behind while all your co-workers get married. You know, the kind of things that we think about at 4 or 5. Oh, yeah, 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 definitely. I, I remember when I was 5 and all my co-workers <laughs> got married. <laughs> uh, of course, next up on this is uh, Netflix, and I know you've heard of this one, High Score Girl. Oh, I want to see that one. I've heard good I, things. I have such mixed feelings about this show. I mean... The animation is just this all CG animation, so and it's heard. very awkward. And I guess the characters are twelve. I hope they're not older than because they look like they're like ten to twelve years old. And it's about this kid who is worthless on almost every front. He sucks at school. He sucks at sports. He sucks at everything he does. But he's really good at video games. He loves video games. So he's in the arcade playing Street Fighter. Mm -hmm when he gets beaten badly over and over again and finds out this girl who's just like the preppy princess mm -hmm. at the school who has all the good grades everything there mm -hmm. and she's like kicking his butt mm -hmm. so he cheats her he cheats and <laughs> uses like cheesing basically cheeses her and you know street fighter enough to know how you could do that with yeah. guile for instance yeah uh anybody knows Sonic guile Sonic yeah. Sonic 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 and uh Sonic 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 she ends up punching him in the face for it. Oh, wow. Uh, but for some reason, they end up uh, developing this friendship. And half of it is about this friendship between the two, and the other half is about classic video games, mm -hmm. like Splatterhouse or Ghosts and Goblins or Final Fight. It's actually pretty cool. If you, are into the, if you grew up with those games, this series definitely can appeal to you. Mm -hmm. It's just hard for me to get over the animation, but it was worthwhile. Hmm. Last but not least, I started on Kimi ni Todoke. Hmm. We had our top ten anime, and this one really, really is in the competition to knock one of mine off. Really? Yes, it is a really good series. How far have you gotten into it? I'm about halfway through volume two. Hmm. So I've gotten through the first 13 episodes. I've got like a, a number right. left. Um, and... <laughs> it's about this girl 
who has been isolated for most of her time up to high school. She, her name is Sawako, which many people ended up calling her Sadako because she has this unfortunate appearance that makes her kind of look like mm. uh, yeah, uh, these type of characters. And she has very socially awkward, which doesn't help her much. But this one guy takes an interest in her, and from there she starts to develop real friendships and move on <coughs> into trying to become, you know, a regular, regular high school girl. Hmm. Uh, it is a story filled with a lot of entanglements, misunderstandings, romance... Uh, and uh, it is, and somebody who is kind of broken, mm. uh, finally starting to heal and, and become whole. So to me, it, it really is a great series so far. Um, a lot of good character development. Very much worth having. Mm. I'm kind of glad I got the premium editions for that. So I am looking forward to, matter of fact, watching it again. I hated leaving it. Hmm. Uh, that's how good it is, is that I didn't want to put it down. And that's pretty hard. That's pretty good sign yeah. when you don't want to put a series down. Definitely. So what have you been starting or continuing or <laughs> pretty much everything but finished? <laughs> Funny thing is, I opened and set aside to watch Kimi ni Todoke. Hmm. But I have not yet had time to start it. But it sounds <laughs> like I should start it very soon. Very good series. <clears throat> So, the only things really that I've started this week are actually a couple of manga, and I'm kind of uh, a little bit on the fence about this because I am already reading so many manga series, <laughs> I want to complete some of them, but they're mostly ongoing, <laughs> but we got so many fun new ones at the library, and I finally picked up today Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid, but I haven't gotten to start reading it yet. But the two I did start reading, I did start reading Bungo Stray Dogs, which that one so far is not a priority. I'll probably read on it a little here and there, but it's kind of, it's interesting, but it didn't really grab me with the first volume. I'd have bought that for $2. Yeah. And the other one, which I was curious about, partly because I have the anime and I want to see it, and I will get to it eventually, but I read the first volume of the manga for Flying Witch. And it's pretty fun. It's cute. It's a very simple animation. Which, considering, I'll, I'll tell you when we get to the ongoing... Actually, I guess I'll go ahead and do the ongoing uh, while you're putting stuff away. Yeah, I, read it, <laughs> I read it immediately following volume 10 of Kaoru Mori's A Bride Story. And I continue to say A Bride Story is one of the best freaking manga in existence. The art is gorgeous. And it's a very well-researched historical drama. I really enjoy it. I can't wait for an anime, but they are going to need one hell of a budget to come close to the art of the manga. Um, but it was kind of a step down in art from that one to Flying Witch. <laughs> But they're still fun. Um, and I also went, I continued on with some reading some more X-Men Blue. Uh, and continued on with my viewing of Arrow and Gravity Falls. I've made some pretty good headway on both of those. And I have made some good headway reading Naruto. I'm working on the Chunin exam right now. They're in the forest of death, and they've encountered Orochimaru. So. That was really where it started yeah. to pick up yeah. big time, because you start really opening up all of the other characters. Right, right, definitely. Well, the volume I read uh, toward the end of it, they had that flashback from Eno where they talk about her background with Sakura, and that was like a oh, nice little bit of character development there. Plus, you see Rock Lee get the crap beat out of him because of his crush on Sakura and it's kind of like you, you see a little bit about his character there so it's pretty cool I'm enjoying it uh, I believe my introduction to Naruto was actually he showed me the Rock Lee Gara fight from the uh, what the third part of the Chunin exam it was an awesome fight yeah it was a good fight a really sad one yeah 
So at any rate, so that's my ongoing basically. So yeah, if you want to get into the watched and read in completion. Okay. <laughs> Anything that you're reading. Well, that was like I said, what the ongoing okay, reading. Okay, just the uh... the only thing okay. that I read. I started and finished within the time frame that this we've been doing is the first ever book from Haruki Murakami. Uh, it's called Hear the Wind Sing. It's apparently the first part of a trilogy. Murakami is one of my favorite contemporary Japanese authors. I've only read a couple of his books. I'm trying to read more. Time. <laughs> but uh, it's a great book, and I enjoyed it. Um, and I even had to make note of a quote. He has a couple really great lines, really great quotes. And this is a, uh, an example of his writing from the book. He has a line where he says, "People with dark hearts have dark people with dark hearts have dark dreams. Those <coughs> whose hearts are even darker can't dream at all." And I'm like, oh, "That's a pretty good line. I like that." <laughs> but anyway. So, what was last week's uh, movies galore movie? Last week's? Yeah. Lion King? Lion King. Okay. <laughs> uh, I was thinking to myself, okay, that was one I actually did not watch, by the way. I had not gotten time to watch it, but really? I had seen it so many times, I knew it pretty much by heart by that time. <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> but uh, along that line, one I was not there for, yet did watch, was Jaws. <laughs> I had yeah. gotten so sick... That my voice was just not capable. You you guys got to see yeah. me when I was barely functioning with it a few mm. weeks back. Um, I, yeah, it's like it was I recorded a, a video, and then we recorded one more video, and then it was just one at a time until yeah. I could get myself back on track. I mean, at the end of that anime mm -hmm. video we did, I was ready to just... My, my voice was dead. And of course, I did knock out both of those myself, and uh, as well as during this time period, the previous week, Lake Placid was also uh, for me during this time period. I actually covered Lake Placid on my last uh, on all my last th all three oh. of those. All three of those. We we had some pretty good uh, commentary on all of them, I think. And yeah, uh, I think you should check it yeah. out. I'm not really going to uh, get yeah. a bigger podcast for it. Right. Uh, and while I'm on that subject, uh, I watched this week's submission, Cujo. Oh, I need to see that tonight. Cujo, oh my gosh. <laughs> I saw it when I was really young. I don't know how young I was, but I know I was really young. <laughs> it scared the crap out of me. It really traumatized me when I was a child. And I still don't like the movie. I saw it again, and I still don't like the movie. I'll be a little bit more into it. I mean, it's just basically about a dog that becomes rabid and just goes around killing people. Mm, good times. Terrorizes a woman and her child, leaves them trapped in a car um, mm. for pretty much half of the movie. Okay. Stephen King, and hopefully this will be mentioned on the discussion tomorrow night, but uh, Stephen King even said he did not remember writing it. He was so deep into his alcoholism, he wrote an entire group of like short stories, basically, about this that became a book, and he had no memory of doing it. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's just how bad off he was. Mm -hmm. So you want to read something that was done in Stephen King's worst drug and alcohol phase, that would probably be it right mm. there. So, um, Cujo. Mm -hmm. Isn't that something? Ooh. Okay, so um, <clears throat> I saw some interesting stuff this week. A good assortment of interesting things, really. And uh, Kujo is one that I will have to watch for uh, Movies Glores discussion. Um, but there were a couple of notable ones I saw that had not been viewed. And one of them, I may or may not have made mention to this at some point. I don't remember. But probably two or three months ago, I worked with a, uh, a, a sub who works at our library. Uh, he works there occasionally, and he's also a big movie uh, person. Oh, oh, oh. And he came into work one day toting a list of every film ever nominated for Best Picture. And he wants to watch them all. Jeez. And I'm like, well, good luck with that. Um, but I kind of want to uh, not necessarily sit down and do all of them like he's doing. But I want to be able to say that I have seen them all. 
And there's a lot that I have not it's seen. It's going to be hard because oh, some of them will. aren't even available. A couple of them no longer exist yeah. in their original form, if they do at all. Um, <clears throat> I have gotten notably, I still need to see Green Book, <laughs> the winner, <laughs> but I've seen every other one from this year. You have to go all the way back to 1996's Secrets and Lies, which is almost impossible to get <coughs> uh, until you find one I've not seen. But I knocked out one over this time period from 1983 that I actually checked out and have mm -hmm. been sitting on for a month or so. <coughs> but I finally knocked out the movie The Big Chill, which is a pretty big 80s movie. Certainly for our generation, that's a big one, so... I feel a little better about having finally yeah. seen it. Um, of course, for those who don't know, that's a big, big name cast. I mean, you got Kevin Klein, Glenn Close, and an Oscar nominated performance. Mary Kay Place, Jeff Goldblum, uh, William Hurt, uh, Tom Berenger. Uh, it's a pretty awesome cast. And uh, it awesome soundtrack i've actually owned the soundtrack since high school i <laughs> just now got around to the movie <laughs> but uh glad i finally saw that one though <laughs> well as you yeah. might have seen previously on the pickups i picked mm -hmm. up a whole bunch of films for the paul brothers which uh, uh -huh. are best known for the barbarians movie mm -hmm. and one of the film and i watched two films by that had them in it Mm -hmm. And this one had them only in like a cursory appearance of like a, they were like um what do they call it uh they were just delivery boys. Uh and it was the uh a wi the white horse is dead. That's what the movie is called. <laughs> it's a really artistic film or one that's really trying to be artistic. Mm -hmm. Uh I don't I did not put that one in my pickups because it was used at the time. Mm -hmm. You know I am with used. Yeah. Um it's about this woman and her daughter and she is majorly sheltering her daughter mm. but this person that they hire for to look after the house uh, is forming a relationship with her and her daughter is yearning to be free and uh her daughter likes this bloodletting thing with leeches which is mm. a little bit creepy and a little bit disgusting but yeah. not abstractly disgusting mm. or really any kind of disgusting overall. It wasn't as bad as it sounds, mm -hmm. but still dragged, slow. Mm. Good times. You know those movies that really want to be artsy but kind of fall flat? Oh, I've seen a few of those. That's one of those. <laughs> All right. So, my next, I'm going to go ahead and lump two of them together, even though one in by itself is enough to take up an entire <laughs> uh this last week of course was holy week and like i said i'm not a huge religious person i'm not but i wanted to one there's a movie that is a family tradition at easter time and there's one that i just wanted an excuse to get it watched because i wasn't sure when it would happen otherwise it is a family tradition to watch Jesus Christ Superstar. I mean, we just I've always enjoyed the film. I know the songs by heart. It's really I even saw a live performance and we met Ted Neely, Jesus. We met him afterwards and hung out with him. He was a really cool guy. Uh but um it's not a brilliant film, but if I recall correctly, it was the original rock opera or at least it was one of them. So it's got some historic value there. Yeah. And um, you talk about uh, childhood traumas. This is a minor one. But I, I remarked to mom after we watched this, and she was like, really? She had no idea. By the end, uh, the way the movie's set up, you see the actors come in on a bus and leave on a bus, and you don't see Ted Neely leave. And when I was a kid, the first few times I saw it, I swore I thought they left him on the cross. <laughs> 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 so, but um, but I know better, obviously. But <laughs> but it's it's always fun to see that one. The other one that's not so fun, in part because it's four hours long, not quite, but close. 
I did see my copy of Cecil B. DeMille's The Ten Commandments. (laughs) And I made sure to watch it all in one go. I actually watched that on Maundy Thursday because I figured, well, Passover night is the... uh... (laughs) I could do you better than that. Uh, When I watched it, it was was an extra on the... on my copy of Ten Commandments with um, Charlton Heston. That was this oh, is yeah. this. Oh, is I'm a... looking at the original Ten Commandments. Oh no no no! I watched that film plus the oh, original back did... to back. Mm, I didn't even look at that. I probably do have a short film or an original no, or that's film. A, it's an actual film. Yeah, film. I was gonna say I probably do have other films. On... I, I I watching the movie. I was done with that set. You know, I wasn't. <laughs> It's <laughs> a long time. It's a long movie. It's a good movie. It is a good movie. It's not a great movie. It does feature some, uh, uh, let's say, dated, um, dated uh, stuff and some, um, uh, what am I trying to say, um, inaccurate stuff. It's like my um, Ben-Hur set. Um, yeah. It's got the original Ben-Hur and it's got the... Then, right. Well, it's not new. <laughs> but it, it, but for the time, as horrible as the special effects are, for the time they were impressive, and the film actually won an Oscar for its special effects. Um, <laughs> but that I think that was a Best Picture nominee. I had seen it before, so I wasn't taking that off of the list. But I could confirm that I had seen it. So. So that was a couple, that was much of my viewing this past week, I can tell you that. <laughs> the thing I'm looking for. Uh, but, do you have another one you wanted to mention while you're looking, or should I continue on, or what's the plan? Same. That's, ah. that's the version I have. That's a nice set. Yeah, that's a nice set. A really it really nice. is. I, yeah, ha- I had really waited nice to get it on that set just because it's a cool set. It is. And it, like I said, it has the three disc. Yeah, I, I think mine's a third like di- a, two disc. Because there's a really old version of yeah. the movie as well that's on there. Yeah. And a very different kind of take. You know, I've never seen the movie Jesus Christ Superstar. Never. Never. I, I've Holy watched. Crap. I've watched the musical. I've that's watched. Really a, I've weird. watched the live performances, but I've not watched it. I've not watched the movie. Well, I've not seen the recent film, which I want to see. There was a TV live performance i think last year hmm. that tim uh that uh, andrew lloyd weber and i do believe tim rice uh and uh the star one of the stars of the redo john legend became egot winners because of that you hmm. know they are in and i think they were like the 14th 15th and 16th Wow. There are not a lot of EGOT winners. Of course, Emmy, Grammy, Oscar, Tony. You know, that's that's impressive to get all four of those. There are not that many. And three of them got it last year because of the live performance of that one. <laughs> so I got this uh, Arrow set that uh-huh. I've been wanting to get for a while. Uh-huh. Then I read something on... Then I, got, I found out I got a region-free player, so since I've got one, mm-hmm. I'd be able to watch all the films. But then I found out something really cool Mm -hmm. is that even though they say they're region B, Mm -hmm. the Blu-rays are actually region free. Oh. So they play on any Blu-ray player. Really? And that is the house collection that has all four movies, Mm. two of which were, one of them was released under a different name and the other one never bothered to get a physical release here. Mm. So it was cool having all four movies under one roof, so to speak. Mm. I love the house movies. You've seen the first two, right? Yes. I mean, they have some Cheers alum in those, yes. uh, which are really fun. You got Norm in the first one and uh, Cliff in the second one, I believe. They're really fun horror comedies. The first one's slightly more on the horror range, closer to Poltergeist, I guess you could mm-hmm. say, uh, about this guy who goes into this house uh, mm-hmm. in search for his son who went missing there when they lived mm-hmm. there so many years ago. And uh, it's a haunted house, and he has to confront the hauntings and the evil spirit that is behind the haunting Hmm. it's kind of like evil dead meets poltergeist Hmm. um the second film is a lot cheesier than that (laughs) uh, about this uh guy who comes back from the dead Uh, he was a um guardian of this crystal skull thing not the indiana jones one uh (laughs) and all of these uh spirits are time traveling 
things are after it. It's just, uh, it's a really weird movie, mm. uh, but it is a fun one. The third and the fourth, I tell you the truth, I don't remember much about. They were okay. People had said they're not really good, but I disagree. They, uh, they were decent. The fourth mm. one actually was a haunted house movie, and the third one didn't have a haunted house, which is why I felt like I guess that's why. I know the third one was not memorable at all. The fourth one kind of went back to the old formula again, which I enjoyed the fourth one. So mm. I, I think this is worth having. So if any of you do get a hold of them, mm. the Arrow ones do play on regular players. I don't know if all of them do. I doubt all of them do, but mm. these do. So that's just kind of a cool uh, thing with all the cool bonus features. Mm. And it really is a neat set. Good times. All right, I'm going to kind of lump these together too, but... um. I actually got to see three of last year's releases during the this time period. I had checked out a fourth one, but sadly I did not get around to Leave No Trace, and I had to turn it back in. I'll see that again soon. But it's kind of funny, because I followed up the Ten Commandments with a movie that was less than half as long. Considerably less than half as long. Uh, the following night I watched the recent Illumination version of The Grinch. <laughs> which, surprisingly, is not a bad movie. Uh, I still think that Illumination probably only ever got the rights to these because Dr. Seuss died. I don't think that this would have ever happened on his watch. Uh, and I, God knows how many other of the, his stories they're going to turn into movies hmm. but i will say this it was much better it was much f truer to the book than the ron howard version i was gonna say uh, how it held up to the jim carrey grinch oh it was much better benedict <laughs> cumberbatch makes an interesting grinch he does it in american accent which is really strange but um Kind of funny you mentioned strange when it comes to American Yes, yes exactly. <laughs> <come back>. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, I did that on purpose, obviously. Uh, <laughs> so that was one of the three, and that was interesting. It was they did they kind of butchered the uh, music. I was that was my least impressive part. They did a score by Danny Elfman, which was great, but the songs themselves were, eh. but everything else was good. Um, but I saw two really strong films from the year that both got swept under the rug, and I was kind of d disappointed by this. Um, and they're both but fairly exciting directors. Uh, Joel Egerton, uh, actor who is well known for films like Loving and uh, um, one of the Star Wars movies, I don't remember which one, and, <laughs> and what have you. Uh, made his directorial debut with a wonderfully creepy horror film called The Gift, which was awesome. And this time around, he went into creepy horror, but doing something completely different. He did a film called The Boy Erased, where Lucas Hedges plays a young man of uh, ambiguous sexual identity whose father happens to be a minister, is played by Russell Crowe, <laughs> and his mother is played by Nicole Kidman, and they're good southern folk, you know, that sort of thing. And he gets outed to his parents, and of course, his father, being the good southern minister, gets him signed up for a conversion therapy course. And Egerton plays the counselor who's in charge of the... Uh, it gets into some really uncomfortable territory. The film is a broadside against the conversion therapy. But it was really well done, well acted, and very interesting. And then probably the strongest one, which was a delightful surprise for me. I am a big fan of Jason Reitman as a director. I loved Thank You for Smoking. I loved Juno. I loved Up in the Air. But I was uh, uncertain about young adult. I it, I didn't like it. Charlize Theron's yeah. character was so unlikable in that film. So when I heard that she and the writer of the film, Diablo Cody, and uh, Jason Reitman had teamed up again, I was understandably wary. But they did team up for a movie called Tully in which Theron plays a, at the beginning of the film, very, 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 very pregnant woman. And third time mother yeah. her son they never really say but it's heavily implied that he is autistic and 
she just is at her wit's end and her husband is played by Ron Livingston in his usual kind of doofy sad sack kind of role and he's obviously no help <laughs> and and she on the insistence of her brother-in-law or brother her brother she hires a night nanny uh, named Tully and it gets into some weird twists I'm not going to say what the twists are but it was really good. The film was actually a good companion piece for Mirai hmm. in terms of depicting the exhausting <clears throat> nature of family and all that kind of thing. But also the the positives, you know what I mean? So it was really well done. Charlie Theron did a phenomenal job. And it's just a, a crying shame that the film kind of fizzled before award season, you know? <laughs> Well, I'm covering... Uh, I, I finally put my toe into the Matrosia, and we covered these a little bit in the pickups, um, okay. by watching the two Dorothy the Pig uh, <laughs> uh, videos. Right. I had to even pull this one, this Easter egg that wouldn't die thing that <laughs> is out there, which I got to try. And I got it originally egg. for Snow Shark, and the movies were so cheap, I went ahead and bought the whole catalog. Right. And... You know that you're in for trouble when you start it up and the first thing you see is the title is The Retard on the Roof. And you're thinking, oh, that's not good. <laughs> All right, well. But it did make me chuckle a couple of times. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was a story about a guy with a riding lawnmower that kills people, which kind of funny because it reflects the uh, trauma one I picked up this yes. week. Um, what is it with you in those stories? Uh, there's one where um, a person is obsessed with Kiefer Suther Sutherland, which was interesting. Mm -hmm. They had sort of a, a Muppet one, which was kind of cool. Uh, so there were a couple of fun ones interspersed, and they're not that long. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just a few dollars. It's worth throwing them in for independent creators. But... Uh, you could you, even say, as you like at the beginning of the thing, that you buy it for a dollar. Yeah, for a dollar. <laughs> no more than a dollar. <laughs> All right. Well, something that cost me a lot more than a dollar. In fact, it cost me $20 because I went to a Fathom event screening. Oh. Uh, this one let me know at the very last minute about a Fathom event screening that I had not realized was coming and I got to see a film literally 25 years in the making. Oh, lucky man. So I went to go see the Fathom screening of Terry Gilliam's long-awaited The Man Who Killed Don Quixote. Which, if you know anything about the history of this film, it's kind of fascinating and horrifying at the same time. I think Gilliam is one of the worst bad luck cases in all of <laughs> <laughs> At least this movie is, anyway. <laughs> this movie, oh my god. He actually started work on the story in the early 90s. He got financing and a cast and a crew and everything and went to Spain in the late, I think it was 99 or 2000. Yeah, I've seen Man of La Mancha, which will tell you the whole no, story. No, Lost in La Mancha. Lost in La Mancha, yeah. I need to see that. I really do need to see <laughs> Lost in La Mancha. But basically, he had um, Johnny Depp in the role of Toby, who's a, uh, a young upstart director. And um, I think it was... who It was a famed French actor who was played um, the guy... I can't remember who it was, <laughs> but um, there's a guy, uh, Javier, I think was his name. He's a local cobbler who stars in a student film that Toby makes. At least that's this version. I'm going on this version. But anyway, he, he starred as Don Quixote de la Mancha in a student film by this upstart director, and he... Uh, 20 year, 10, 20 years later, something like that, the director is now this established Hollywood director, and they're back in Spain filming a new film. And on a lark, he's like, holy crap, I'm near this city where I made my... I'm going to just go visit. And he finds out this cobbler now believes he is Don Quixote. <laughs> and he is he actually like gives these speeches and tours and whatever. And the woman who had played his um, Dulcinea... 
uh, is no longer there. She has gone to the city, and according to her father, is now a whore, and, and all this stuff. And um, I, I don't know how much of the story changed in this time, but basically the original version got, there were floods, <laughs> there were people pulled out of the financing, <laughs> everything went wrong. Uh, Johnny Depp remained attached for at least 10 years and eventually went his own way. Uh, they went through a lot. They cast John Hurt, and he ended up passing. <laughs> um, it, eventually, Toby is played by Adam Driver, and Don Quixote is played by uh, Jonathan Price. And I honestly, Jonathan Price was one of the weakest links in the Brothers Grimm. It was one of the worst performances I've ever seen him give. But he has a long history with Gilliam, dating at least to Brazil. And he is absolutely, yeah, he is absolutely brilliant in this film. Oh, Jean, uh, Jean Roquefort, I believe it is. Jean Rochefort, yeah, is the one who was originally uh, Don Quixote. But it's a very interesting film. It starts off actually relatively normal. And as it goes on, it gets more and more... It, you know it's not a Terry Gilliam film if it doesn't come completely unraveled at some point by the end. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really good. And I feel for the guy that after all this time, his film comes out with a whimper. Like a Fathom event and then a limited release the next week. And it's like, is it even still in theaters? This is like two I weeks don't know. later? I'll be checking um, it out because if it's in theaters yeah. Saturday, I do yeah. have an opportunity to go to theaters. Ah. But so if I don't, look uh, for it. But yeah. if I don't, if it's not there, then I'll probably yeah. watch Shazam because I've been wanting yeah. to watch Shazam, Shazam. And of course, like <laughs> most Fathom events, it did have a little featurette at the end. It was interesting, but not extraordinary. It was mostly about the costuming mm. and the locations <laughs> and stuff, but was interesting well my other view which is of mm -hmm. course a, a bootleg i ended up getting mm -hmm. because it's not released officially mm -hmm. here is the film think big with the paul brothers and ah. they play these truck drivers right they're kind of superstitious truck drivers and they're screw-ups it is essentially and uh mm -hmm. they're given one more chance to get a load to the place on time Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, there's also a subplot about this girl who's escaping a genius academy because she found out one of her devices was going to be used by the military, so she took the only prototype and ran mm -hmm. with it. She runs into them, and they end up coming to her aid. See, that explanation makes it make more sense, but just that phrase, escaping from a genius academy, for some reason that cracks me up. <laughs> But uh, it, it's a film I watched a lot when I was young. I had it on, uh, I might still have it on VHS, uh, though I recorded off of Showtime. I watched that until I rubbed the tape raw on the machine. Mm. And um, it just, it was just so funny and enjoyable. Mm. I'm glad to have it, uh, another physical copy of it, because it's just one I want to preserve. Good times. Hope they have a... F and a legit release would be wonderful. So please give us a legit release. <laughs> Yes. Get on it, Criterion. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it'd be interesting to see a Paul Brothers collection. Right. Though it'd probably be more on the tinfoil yes. uh, than the uh, Criterion collection. <laughs> well, I, still, Actually, I still hope for that tinfoil collection. Kino Labar. I could huh? see them doing a yes. Paul Brothers collection because that would be down their alley with the Barbarians, Think yeah. Big, Double Trouble... Or something. I think it's double you know, trouble. Yeah. I'm I'm not so sure a Criterion would do this, but you seriously, you should write a letter to Kino Lorber, shout an arrow, and <laughs> promote to all of them. You should say <laughs> y'all should seriously think about a tinfoil collection. Yeah. <laughs> See what they do with that. <laughs> all right. How many more you got left? Well, let's see here. I have a number left. Oh, you do. Uh, I have five. Oh, because I was bunching them all together. Well, I'll just make a quick note. I don't know if I talked about it before, but just in case, I finally reached a resting point with CSI. I finished season <laughs> five, 
and that is what I own of the series. So I have finished season five. I can take a break. <laughs> we were going to replace it with Columbo, but those are two-hour episodes, so it's going to take a minute. <laughs> yeah, I love Columbo. <laughs> I haven't started yet, Lord. but I want to soon. Do you have that collection? Yes. Oh, yeah. I love that. Um, so, yeah, if you want to go ahead, I'm going to do my last two as one. So, Well, I watched... A, actually, I'm going to have to go because you talked about Columbo. Yeah. Murder by Death. <laughs> it's a I've, classic. I've had my copy for a while, mm. and then, you know, my mother's been here, so I was looking for something for us to watch right. together that wasn't super long because mm-hmm. she's wanted to see Bohemian Rhapsody, but that's huh. a long film. Yeah. So we finally settled Ten on Murder by <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> So we finally we finally did settle on Murder by Death, and uh, it's a fun. It sort of mm-hmm. like uh, makes fun of things like Clue. It makes um, fun of pretty much of any of these detective, like, detective series, detective series out there. because you have your Agatha Christie. You've yeah. got your. It's just you've got all of these, and uh, unfortunately, it saddles Peter Sellers with a Charlie Chan knockoff, and that's, yeah, uh, I, you know what's weird is yeah. I have. I'm mixed in my feelings mm. because you can't make fun of Charlie Chan without having a white guy play it. That's true. And since it's a parody... That's true as well. It's, but it so, still feels icky. Oh, it does feel... It's terribly racist, and ter- mm. uh, but Charlie Chan was terribly racist. Yes, I've never gotten into those. So, but it was a... Uh, but it was so funny and uh i mean they go and they're all invited to this party to try and mm-hmm. solve a murder right and they're all saddled with the these uh, details and people trying to knock them mm-hmm. off and uh you know there, there's the old adage that that rings true but i'm not going to say it because it would ruin yeah. the uh plot twist at the end and the colombo connection comes with peter falk playing basically a what's his name sam diamond or yeah he plays it's a sam spade knockoff yeah but he's like yeah. is it sam diamond or i think it's sam diamond <laughs> it's a really uh <laughs> if you haven't checked it out it is a classic peter falk is a fun yeah. character i mean i loved his appearance in the muppet caper where he basically plays himself as Columbo, but gets everything wrong. <laughs> it's a, it is a, it's just fun watching him on screen. Hmm. All right. You want me to do another one, or you want, uh, or you got enough to cover? Um. Well, like I said, I have two left, and I'm doing them together. So oh, so yeah, I'll yeah. go ahead and I'll do yeah. two more then. Okay. Um, and then I'll leave me with two, which I can do. Okay. Uh, I know you've seen this one. You've seen both of these. Uh, and one you'd probably be gl- glad seeing again. The other one, probably not so much. <laughs> okay. Which is uh, the first one being Hellfest. Okay. Which is obviously the one you want to see again. I did not mind Hellfest. It was not great by any means. You got to see it in theaters. Which I know. Which is interesting. <laughs> it um, is. But Hellfest is about this horror like this big horror event that just yeah. has all of these like horror haunted houses well, and horror stuff like theme that park, basically and uh it just you know it's moving it's a moving show that sets yeah. up and goes but there are these murders that keep taking place at at this thing and it has these uh these group of friends that's coming in there stereotypical horror group of friends mm-hmm. and they are targeted mm-hmm. by this killer I really did like this film. Hmm. <clears throat> I am fascinated with these horror events and the haunted houses and mm-hmm. the costumes. And you got to see tons of that there. The creativity mm-hmm. is just its just amazingly mm-hmm. high. I really like the creativity they showed in this. Mm-hmm. And the killer was an interesting killer. It was nothing new, but still... Decent mm-hmm. little twist in the end. Oh, that was a big twist in the final frame of the movie. It was interesting. <laughs> but, uh, you know, as things go, it was a great slasher movie. I had a wonderful time watching it. And I'll have to eventually get it. It's on my wish list to get. Eventually. Oh, did you just, like, stream it or something? Or? Uh, we had some points left over uh-huh. uh, for our Verizon points. They're getting ready to phase them out. So okay. we used them for that movie. Okay. 
right. Because, um, yeah, I believe your wife actually went. I, I think I tagged along with her and uh, and her other friend for that one. So. The other one that I had that I know you really liked was oh. A Silent Voice. Oh, yeah. I had gotten a copy of it, and I went immediately into it because we're going to do eventually a list of the top mm-hmm. ten movies, mm-hmm. and I need to watch this one because I need to be able to have... I need to watch a few more, mm-hmm. actually, so that I can start preparing oh, for be that. Doing a lot of anime viewing the next couple weeks. And so I'm going to probably concentrate on movies once I get through some of these mm-hmm. used ones mm-hmm. uh, so we can pr- so I can start prepping for the list. Mm-hmm. And this one was really good. It's mm-hmm. uh we've talked about it over and over again on this <laughs> channel, so I'm not going to bore you. But it is a really well well uh well done character study mm-hmm. talking about subjects of bullying and mm-hmm. redemption. And in this day and age where redemption just doesn't exist these yeah. days, I, I mean, in reality, if you did something 20 years ago, mm-hmm. even as a 10-year-old, most of the people in, the, in mm-hmm. that would be like, nope, you are a criminal for life. It seems just society has gotten to be so judgmental these days. Yeah. Uh, there, there, is no, uh, there is no forgiveness and yet, certain people get off scot free. Yeah, well, uh, well, okay. Yeah. There is forgiveness with people who are not known for being forgiving, which, which is, is really weird. But they only really forgive each other. So, yeah. but that's been going on for all. They, they oh, let yeah. their own people get away from with murder for oh, years. Yeah. So it's just you know now it's on the other side that's not mm-hmm. forgiving anybody. Yeah, and that's kind of sad. Yeah. Very much so. So we need a little bit of redemption, and I think right. if any of you want to, you should watch this movie because you, you could learn a little thing about it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's funny that you mentioned that because, um, and incidentally, shameless plug for our upcoming anime videos, the, we are doing the one of the top ten movies, and we're also going to work on influential anime. But we just posted, and you should definitely go back and watch our video on... Uh, the best anime series and to prep for that I started one and finished another I tried to watch both and just didn't have time to quite finish both I decided to target some top rated series to that were sitting around in my collection unwatched and as I mentioned in our previous vlogcast one of those was Steins Gate which I did complete. I have not seen the movie, which is a sequel to the series, and may color my impression of the series. But I did finish Steins Gate, <laughs> and I did watch Kids on the Slope. And they are both freaking awesome series. Oh, they, they really, are. Mm-hmm. They're really, did you see Steins Gate? I forgot. Uh, I know of it by reputation. Well, yeah, and well, I the reputation is... Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, basically, the, the gist of each of these, Steins Gate is essentially a time travel caper, in a sense. But it's also a deeply philosophical uh, thing. And basically, the idea is you have this these, these three individuals. You got the dude who's a self-proclaimed mad scientist... You got the big geeky nerd who's like a tech genius. And then you got the weird girl who's the hostage. And they uh, belong to this uh, future gadgets laboratory is what they call themselves. But it's really just a dinghy room over top of a a (laughs) shop. And the landlord, who they call Mr. Braun, is... um, they They have an interesting relationship with him. And they accidentally discover time travel via text message using a microwave. It's very complicated, but that's the basic gist of it. And so he ends up bringing into the fold, by the end of the series, I think there were eight members of the laboratory, and they get brought in for one reason or another. But in particular, uh, Makisu Chris is um, this genius who becomes kind of the main guys, um, they kind of develop an infatuation with each other. <coughs> but basically, he keeps going back. Um, well, they, they play with time travel through the text messaging, and he learns a little bit too late that they have been making some serious ripples in the time. And the first season ends on one 
hell of a cliffhanger. The first season is okay. The second season is where it becomes awesome. And, but like I said, it ends on one hell of a cliffhanger. And the second se season focuses on undoing things, certain things. And trying to, again, trying to find redemption in a sense. Um, and it has pretty solid music. The artistic visual effects are pretty solid. It's a good series. It's a, not best series ever, but it is a great series. Um, and Kids on the Slope, of course, is from Shinichiro Watanabe, the uh, director of Cowboy Bebop and Samurai Champlo. And this season's Carol and Tuesday is well-known director, is well-known for his love of music, for his uh, familiarity with uh, Western hmm. music. And his, and his frequent uh, partner, Yoko Kano, works with him on this one. This particularly is a, a, is a series about jazz, and it's a period piece. It takes place yeah, in the yeah. 60s, I think. Yeah, it was. Um, a... 50s or 60s. And it's just, it's a period drama about these kids who love jazz. And that's really the gist of the series, but it really gets into relationships. It really gets into what it's like to be that age. It really gets into a lot of things. It's really, really, really well done. It is one of those series where I very nearly knocked a star off because I very nearly hated the ending, but they brought it around at the last yeah. possible minute, and it actually is a pretty good ending. Actually, I like how they but brought it around. Like I like the I like the very end, but it it came really close to losing some steam for me there. But it was really good, and I, I, this makes me even more into. I really want to see Carol on Tuesday. I never have seen Samurai Champlo, so this is like, I need to get going on that. <laughs> see, you need to, you need to also watch uh, Mongolian Chop Squad. True. Which uh, very similar in a lot of ways. Uh, right. Very similar themes, different mm -hmm. type of music focus, mm -hmm. different time period. Mm -hmm. But in my opinion. I had really debated internally as to which mm -hmm. one of those I was going to use for the list. Mm -hmm. I didn't really want to use both because I felt like it would be basically right. kind of duplicating. But um, I went with Mongolian Chop mm -hmm. Squad because I felt like they did it better. Mm -hmm. But still, it really was a great piece. And and I will go ahead and note, like having finished both series, <clears throat> currently, tentatively... Kids on the Slope just missed my top 10. It edges Shirobako for the 11th spot, and I've got Steins Gate at 13. So they came really close. Just didn't quite get there. <laughs> so um, I have two last ones. Okay. Uh, one is Delta Rune. I, did, I finished the first okay. chapter, mm. which is all that's released right now. It's by the uh, same creator that did, um, gosh, what is it? Undertale. Huh. Very similar to Undertale, kind of happening in the future where you've got the monster human civilization where they're mm -hmm. living together. Mm -hmm. And there's these weird dark wells that have been exploding and the down balance between light and dark has uh, flipped. Mm. And it's very similar in a lot of ways. They changed the battle system up, have multiple people in the battle system now. Mm -hmm. and uh, But they still have that focus between trying to kill your way through or trying to passively go through mm. and uh i need to really check and see how that would work doing a kill them all playthrough mm -hmm. the first chapter is free mm -hmm. so uh it's worth checking out if you have a switch mm. check it out um last but not least i finished card captors which is why Ooh. i started kimini did nice. and uh you know, it's kind of fun watch, mm -hmm. watching it again. Um, having it on Blu-ray is kind of cool. Um, Do you agree they cleaned it up pretty well? They cleaned it up, yeah. but not enough to where I felt like it was a necessity. Yeah. And, God, I watched the dub the whole way through. It is terrible. <laughs> it's not as bad as the movie dub that they did for the sealed card, right. but... Oh my god, it's terrible. So why would you subject yourself to that? Because that way I could watch it and do some other stuff at the same time. Which I can't do if it's a sub. I've got to watch it straight through. I guess I've got to See, I can't look do at the that screen. Anyway. I can't multitask while I'm watching stuff. It just, I lose so, something. Um, 
See, and to me, it's I get more when I'm doing a little bit of extra mm. because my mind just starts wandering. Mm. And with a sub, I, I miss stuff. Okay. I know I miss stuff because mm. my mind wanders off, and then I'm like, I had no idea what they were doing there. Oh, well. Okay. <laughs> Move on. But it's a good series. It's about a young girl who mm. uh, ends up uh, releasing a whole bunch of magic cards mm -hmm. out in the uh, world, and she has to collect them all. Mm -hmm. And then once she's collected them all, she's got to then prove herself to be the true owner of the cards. And that's yeah. the whole gist of it. And she uses the cards to aid her in her quest to catch the others. Well, we've got five minutes for news. Okay. Glad we covered Monkey Punch's death uh, and the... Uh, it was, un the it was unfortunate. Yeah. I mean, died at 81. I didn't yeah. write how. But there's a couple things I wanted to roll through okay. real quick. Go for it. Um, because there's some Me Too stuff. Yeah. Um, I got some stuff for that too. Polanski is suing yes. to get back into the academy again, which yes. is a which makes no sense to me. He's also got no trouble getting people to act in his films, according well, to what I've heard. The thing is, he the he, the wording of his suit makes sense. He is claiming the academy did not show due process or whatever in kicking him out, and I will admit them tacking on his dismissal to the news that they were kicking out Bill Cosby with no preamble, no nothing, after many years of allowing him to remain. Oh yeah, they shouldn't have had him on They the first really place. the Academy should have either taken action much sooner or they should have done a separate by the way, we've been thinking about it. We need to do this. They really did it poorly. That does not mean they were not justified in their decision. So, yeah. But Polanski is <laughs> suing for that. And he's not the only one suing people over stupid stuff. Well, Vic Mignona is suing Funimation, Monica Rial, Jamie Marchi, yeah. and Ronald Toy over so-called defamation and injury to his career. By all accounts, dude did that to himself. So he did that to his own turn career. <laughs> yes. But, yeah. It, it just, uh, I don't know, with Polanski, he's got some new films coming up, mm -hmm. and he's got no problems getting actors for it. Yeah. Which is funny, because Woody Allen has people always, mm -hmm. like, dropping out. You don't hear that about Polanski. Well, he's had no problem in Europe. He's got no problem in Europe, but yeah. still, Polanski is still is able to is pull Polanski, praise. Polanski is still in Europe, isn't he? Yeah, but I think okay. he's getting American actors. Oh, okay. Which, you know, I'm sorry, but if you're yeah. going to say that Woody Allen uh, is there, don't don't even think yeah. about uh, acting for Polanski, yeah. because he actually has been convicted of it. And I wonder if Polanski <laughs> is partly basing his suit on the fact that Woody Allen is still in the Academy. But yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, Woody Allen has not been convicted. Right. Polanski has, and there have been other allegations. There have right. been 10-year-olds uh, that they've claimed now that he has, yeah. I didn't hear that. Yeah, that's, this is, he's apparently had a lot of allegations. Okay. Which, only one, though, that came to fruition. Right. Which he's on the run from. Yeah. Um, Jeffrey Rush has also uh, won his defamation lawsuit. Who did? Jeffrey Rush. Because he had a... Uh, I did can't... he have a defamation suit? I must have yeah, missed he did. that. And I can't remember what it was about, but it was a Me Too-related incident. Oh. But he won his. Hmm. And, of course, Johnny Depp has a defamation suit. But... He's got some backing for his, because it turns out that the that his ex-wife was not entirely truthful about a lot of her allegations, ah. and it turns out that she also was very physically abusive herself. And then her former girlfriend had come out talking about how she was routinely abused by her. Oh, um, so I have now, not heard that. If it was me, I don't think Johnny Depp is in the clear necessarily. And the defamation suit, if you read it, does make sense from what it was. Because I, Well, I just remembered a completely random bit of trivia about the uh, <coughs> the man who killed Don Quixote. The, the female lead was originally played by Vanessa Parody, who was Johnny Depp's partner for many years and the mother of his children. <laughs> so I'd forgotten all about that. <laughs> Now, there is a change.org petition out to yeah. uh, tell Netflix, give us more physical media uh, releases oh, of your stuff. Nice. Like, uh, say, I don't know, uh, the recent Oscar-winning film, uh, yeah. what would be nice. Um, 
Michael Bay is officially done with the Transformers movies. He and has confirmed much it. much rejoicing. It looks like there might be a sequel to the Bumblebee movie, but mm. it's not him. He's not okay. involved. Uh, and finally, Deadshot has been removed entirely from the Suicide Squad. Really? Yes. Oh. Idris Elba is still playing a part. But he's not Deadshot. But he's not Deadshot. Interesting. Now, that is one of the news items I had, is that Viola Davis has been confirmed to still be Amanda Waller, yep. which is good, because that was one of the few awesome, indisputable things about the first film. That was perfect casting. I am amazed that you missed one of the biggest news items I had. Discotech licensed all of City Hunter, including oh. the new movie, Shinjuku Private Eyes. So, this is another one, I believe, that was on our list that of needs yeah. a re-release. So. And uh, one of those items from the previous, I think it's like yeah. Death of City Hunter or something like yeah. that, that one has not been released here, okay. so that would actually be kind of cool to have. That is cool. So I do look forward to it. Of course, it comes simultaneously <coughs> with Right Stuff announcing that they've dropped the license of Cat's Eye, so it's kind of like win one, lose one for that yeah. universe, but... <laughs> And, uh, of course, speaking of licensure dropping, this was the week where Sentai announced they dropped a channel, which I never got around to getting. Decent slice. And then right at the one hour mark, I have one of the biggest positive news items of the week, or weeks. Khan Film Festival has a record 13 directors screening in the upcoming festival. Twelve of them, or two of them, co-directed an animated film, oh. and so there's twelve total films with female directors, including a record tying four that are in competition. Hmm. Um, so you have some really <coughs> big name male directors: Pedro Almodovar, Terrence Malick. You've got some really big names, but this is a wonderful thing for female directors, and yes. I am. I'm excited about this. I would like to see more diversity behind the cameras. Oh, so yes. That's, Most definitely. That's a good thing there. Um, yeah, so that that was all my news. Very good. Yeah. So we're going to okay. wrap up, uh, mainly because yeah. we got at the hour. We're trying to keep these to an hour yeah. uh, so that they're watchable, I mean, listenable. <laughs> right. So with that being said, I hope you've enjoyed this take through. Yeah. And we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Uh, next time, we should be trying to do another... Well, we'll 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 debate what we're going to do next time. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll right. see you on the next one. Bye. Bye.